वर्ड वर ओके आर्ट ए आर टी आर्ट इज आर डब्ल्यू ई आर टी वर्ड इज वर ओके मैन के नॉट हैव दट वैल्यू बट हैविंग दट मैन फेस ऑन द कॉइन एक्चुअली हैज लॉट ऑफ वैल्यू दैट ही वॉज फेन वेन दव वेर डेस्टिट्यूट सो फेन फाइन वो था सेम हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर शालनी प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश विद्याश्रम फर्स्ट ग्रेड कॉलेज द टेम्पल ऑफ एक्सलेंस माइसोरो Today we are here to discuss about one of the poems prescribed by University of Mysore for first sem BBA. Today we are going to discuss about the poem Avarice. Okay, so let us see what this poem is all about. That poem is written by George Herbert. Okay, so Avarice is actually a noun. This is uh, something to do with the greed towards money. Okay, so let us now understand what is there in today's session, and we'll. enter the session so in today's session we'll be learning something about the poet that is we'll be knowing something about uh, george herbert then we'll also see what the text of this poem is we'll also learn the themes as well as the summary of this poem avarice okay so let us start our session today so first to learn about the poem George Herbert was actually the contemporary of Shakespeare and Milton means he was living during the those century that century where Shakespeare and uh, Milton used to live okay so he is actually poet from 17th century okay so yeah he is the he is called as the contemporary of Shakespeare and Milton then he was always his poems were always elegant and he was a passionate poet okay he was a poet who was known for his devotional verses verse is nothing but poem okay so he was actually known for devotional verses his poems actually focus mainly on this religious experience okay so he talks more about god and the values of life okay so that is what his the themes of his poems contained okay so he used to talk more about god the values of prayer then how we can benefit by praying to god okay so what are all the benefits in our life how we can be mentally at peace so all these were his uh, the were the themes contained in his poems okay some of his most well known poems are the altar and eastern wings okay so the altar is one of his most uh, famous poems okay that also talks more about godliness and the values that has that have to be maintained in one's life so uh, altar talks about that okay so these are the two main uh, poems that is that are written by george herbert okay so his uh, his language actually is uh, the old english like uh, shakespeare used to write so we have in all the languages we have this uh, new version and the older version right so his also was the older version actually okay so altar and eastern wings were his most famous poems so apart from writing in english he also wrote poems in latin language okay so in uh, those days actually latin was one of the subjects one of the languages that were learned in that was learned in school okay so like we learn uh, three languages right in our schooling and also in college we learn two languages right so in the same way they also used to learn english as well as latin okay so he used to learn uh, he used to write poems in latin also uh, when compared to latin and english he was very well received in english compared to that in the in latin language okay so his works were praised uh, as an attempt to express indescribable complexities of spiritual life okay so usually the the experience what you undergo when you are experiencing some spiritual life okay when you concentrate more about spirituality it is very difficult for you to express what you are facing what you are undergoing okay it is very difficult to express your experiences okay but he was very well versed in expressing all these experiences okay so he was very well known for those for explaining those indescribable means in common words they cannot be described okay so but uh, george herbert would 
feel that experiences and he had brought it out in his words that is in his poems okay so that is the reason he was called as a passionate poet and he was also known for the those qualities okay so he used to describe whatever uh, it was not uh, actually possible to be uh, described easily okay so that he was able to describe it is actually complex right spiritual life is actually very complex isn't it so the, like a common man cannot have that experience if at all one experiences then it is very difficult for us to describe that to another person but george herbert was able to do the what was able to describe that okay so that's why he is very well known and he is revered the most okay so now let us go on to the poem so this is the text of the poem okay so let me just explain to you the rhyme scheme that is followed in this sonnet okay so this is also a sonnet like we have shakespearean sonnet we have petrarchan sonnet so all these are sonnets only so this is also one of the sonnets okay so here let me just tell you even this has rhyme scheme okay so let me just tell you what is the rhyme scheme here so money the bane of bliss and source of woe okay so woe nothing but sadness okay so that is the source of sadness when comes thou that thou art so fresh and fine okay so here these two don't rhyme so i am just putting it as a and the last word this one as b okay i know thy parentage is base and low so these two rhyme with each other so again i am writing it a okay man found the poor and dirty in a mine so fine and mine they both rhyme so i write it as b okay so the first stanza the rhyme scheme is a b a b okay so next let us go to the next one surely thou didst so little contribute they are not rhyming with any of those so i give a different name for that to this great kingdom which thou now has got they are not rhyming so i am writing a different letter that he was fain when thou were destitute contribute destitute rhyming with each other so i am writing the same letter to dig thee out of thy dark cave and grot so here got grot rhyming so i write d again the rhyme scheme is c d c d okay obviously here also there will be the same rhyme scheme that is for that will be followed here means bright and right will rhyme so it is giving another uh, uh, name letter for that okay c d is over e and e again here for v and the art the man but to d again f f okay so this rhyme scheme here that is the third stanza rhyme scheme will be e f e f okay then last that is the couplet okay you know right uh, we have already learnt it in shakespearean sonnet this first four lines actually they are called as the first quatrain next four lines another quatrain okay next four lines another quatrain then you have a couplet okay so you have three quatrains and one couplet okay so here uh, you already know the rhyme scheme till here to so the last couplet what the rhyme scheme follows is man call it thee his wealth who made thee rich okay so here you can see this and this they rhyme with each other so you can give one letter for that okay so here you can see ef is over you can give a letter g to this okay so the whole rhyme scheme what is followed here is like any other uh, this one uh, sonnet like ab ab cd cd ef ef and gg so this is the rhyme scheme that is followed here okay so now we saw the rhyme scheme we know it is a sonnet we know it is it has three quatrains and one couplet and we also know that there is a rhyme scheme for this we are aware of what is the rhyme scheme here now let us now jump to the uh, summary of each and each quatrain okay so let us start with the summary so the first quatrain will start with so let me just tell you this poem is actually written about money okay so this poem is altogether uh, the main theme of this is money so the poet talks about the 
sanctity of money means the purity of money and how money has entered into our lives and how uh, and what is the position that money has taken in our lives okay so the poet talks about that over here okay so here money the vein vein you already know it is a curse okay shapa is also called as curse or vein bone is uh, vara shapa is vein okay so vein of bliss bliss means heaven it is actually a bane to heaven okay it is not good for uh, our life if it all if at all it has to be good okay and source of o oh, this source you need not have to get confused this is the same this has the same meaning of source okay source of o oh, okay wo actually means sadness okay all the uh, sadness what you incur okay so that is called as o oh. okay so money is actually uh, it's a bane for our life and it uh, like our life cannot be like a heaven if at all we are we go behind money okay so here and the source of wo it is the source for all our sadness all our anguish okay so that is what the poet says yeah whence whence actually means when okay when comes thou so comes means comes comes thou that thou art so fresh and fine okay so here it is actually you he is talking to this money okay the richness okay so when you come like this when you come out you are so fresh and fine so art means art the old english it is art okay the same word we also learned in shakespearean sonnet okay so art and here also the same thing it is r the older version for r okay so that thou art so fresh and fine means he is talking about the ore that is extracted from ground the from the earth okay so here he is talking about he is referring to gold that is the riches that that is extracted from the earth okay so there it is fresh and fine okay i know thy parentage that means he is talking about parentage means the uh root okay from where this money has come okay so we talking we are talking about parentage means we uh, we are talking like our roots we are talking about means we talk about our parents okay our pa father and mother similarly here also this doesn't have father and mother but the parentage means the root the place from where it has come is actually base and low means here by this phrase he is talking about the earth he is referring to the earth okay so it is base and low it is too deep under the earth okay it is from a very low level that doesn't mean the status is low it only means that the place from where it has come is actually very low it is deep inside the earth is what he says man found d that is you poor uh you can leave out this but the poet has used it but for you to understand you can omit this poor and dirty here also the spelling is actually dirty right this is the spelling but the poet has used this in order to show that this is the older version of english okay so dirty in a mine okay mine you know the place where uh, it is uh, extracted okay ores are extracted from mines right so now you can understand that he is talking about money but at the same time he is referring to that as gold okay he is referring to that as gold so here you can see the mines wherein the, it is very dirty the uh, when whenever it is extracted okay in order to become uh, fresh and fine it has to come out from a place where it is dirty okay where it is like um, everything is very raw kind okay so from that place it is actually uh, extracted so he is talking about the extraction of gold ores okay so next we'll move on to the second quatrain surely thou didst so little contribute okay didst also means did okay so his contribution is very little means the contribution of money is very little to this great kingdom again the spelling issue you can understand it as kingdom only okay so to this kingdom means the place where we live for that the contribution of that money or whatever riches we are talking about is too little okay there is not much of contribution here which thou now hast 
got means initially the contribution was very less means as soon as it was extracted the contribution was very less but now how much has it got thou now has got okay it has got lot of importance okay so that is what it has got now says the poet which thou now hast got so he is comparing the times wherein before it was not so much but now it is okay so it is very important that he was fain when thou wert destitute so fain fine both are same and thou wert were okay art a r t art is r w e r t word is were okay were destitute so here before uh, giving any contribution means before uh, coming into uh, a very important part before having a very important part in one's life money was actually a destitute means gold was actually destitute it did not have any value at all okay so before there was no value but after it is extracted and it is turned into gold okay after the purity changes then it gets lot of importance lot of value to dig the out of thy dark there when it was lying in the ground it did not have any value at all but in order to dig it here also concentrate it is only dig okay so to dig the out of thy dark your dark cave and grot grot means a place like a, a trenches kind okay so there from there to dig it out it was so difficult so till then you were lying there like a destitute like a useless uh, thing over there okay so but after we found you out after the man extracts it after he finds it out then only you get so much of value in one's life is what the poet says okay then for here uh, it is a quatrain and a couplet both are included over here okay so here you can see the first four lines it's actually a quatrain and the last two lines is a couplet okay so then forcing thee by fire he made thee bright okay so the it's nothing but you okay it refers to you so he is talking to money over there so then what happens after ore is extracted what happens it is actually cultured in fire okay it is treated with fire there means they just uh, melt it and they remove all the impurities and they bring out the pure form of gold okay so that they do and they make it bright and man makes it very bright okay so ne thou hast got now now you have have or has you can say but it is have here okay now he has got or they uh, you have got the face of a man means you can see as an example here the coins are not just released simply like that okay they'll have an emblem on it like you can see our coins only there will be the national emblem on it okay national emblem is embossed on it so that is released along with the face of a man means there is something that is engrossed embossed on it okay so uh, that is very important like it gets a face over there when uh, uh, something is uh, embossed on it then it starts getting value before uh, there were only gold coins that were being circulated okay so uh, the poet is talking about that so now yeah gold coins are not in practice but uh, the poet has written about those times when gold uh, coins were in practice okay so once there is a face of man once there is some seal or embossing some that is done there then the value changes there is a change in the value it actually goes to a very high level okay so once it is made bright and it gets the face of a man the value actually changes have with our stamp and seal transferred our right so here by uh, just transferring by just giving a face of man on that we are transferring our rights to the or uh, to money whatever we are transacting okay so till it is with us with uh, like suppose we have gold uh, something like that gold ornaments or something we cannot transact it okay once we have uh, any emblem on it or any value face value on that we start transacting and that time we are giving away our rights to you that means money has started controlling our lives okay so how much it is into our lives okay how much we are dependent on this money is what the poet says okay so here he is talking about how we transfer our rights okay thou art again are the man and man but draws to 
D. Okay. So here there is a change in the appearance. Okay. So yes, man cannot have that value, but having that man's face on the coin actually has lot of value. Okay. So that is what the poet is talking about. There is a disguise. The man, uh, the man's face actually uh, like only that man will not have any value, but the coin which has man's face carries lot of value on it. Okay. So that is what the poet talks about over here. The appearance, the value that is, uh, that, that is increased due to the appearance of the coin. So that is what poet is talking about over here. Man calleth thee his wealth. Okay. Calls. Calleth is nothing but calls. Okay. Man calls you his wealth. Thee is you his wealth who made thee rich. So, the person who had made, who has made you rich means man was the reason to find the, find gold from the mine. And because of that finding only, now money actually, gold actually makes man rich. Okay. The person who was responsible to find gold, the thing what he has found out that itself is making him rich now. Okay. So man is the status of a man is actually decided based on the money what he has based on the richness what he has now. Okay. So here you can see he calls you his wealth, but he was the one to find you out. Okay. So actually you have to give him respect because he has given, uh, he has given an importance to you. He has uh, taken you out. He has extracted you out of the earth, but instead this is something different. Man itself is respecting money. Man itself is totally dependent on money. Okay. So this kind of uh, slavery also you can call. Okay. So this kind of slavery is seen uh, between man and money there. Okay. And while he digs out the falls in the ditch. So this has a profound meaning here. Okay. So while he digs out the, this literally you cannot uh, just assume that he is digging that, digging those ores from the earth. No, it is not only that much. He, it is nothing but the poet here uh, actually talks about man running behind money. Okay. So he, when he starts digging the uh, digging and he finds out uh, money here, that means duration in which the time in which he is running behind money. Okay. So man doesn't care what is happening on him. Okay. So when he digs the, uh, like you can take literal meaning also when he starts digging the earth, he falls into the ditch means he just goes on to a lower level. He just goes back to the earth. Similarly, in the meantime, when he runs behind the behind money, okay, when he starts earning money, when he is completely into earning, he doesn't know what is happening on him. He just goes back to earth. That means he has to die. Okay, going back to earth is nothing but die. So, just running behind money makes him die. Okay. So there is nothing left in his, in one's life. Okay. If you run behind money, finally you won't earn anything. You just have to go back to like, like everybody has to die once. Okay. So one day. Okay. So that is what the poet is talking about. So you just run behind money. You won't achieve anything. You just earn riches, but you cannot take it back with you. Okay. You only go back empty handed to earth. Okay, so this is the profound meaning that George Herbert has in this poem, that too, that too in the last couplet. Okay, so this is what George Herbert was very famous for, inculcating such values in humans' life. It is a kind of mockery that he was doing um, about his society, about the society that he, uh, uh, in the time which he used to live in. Okay, so this has a a very deep meaning. So try to understand this. So altogether the theme of Avarice, okay. Avarice is actually a noun I said. Avarice, uh, the poem is actually composed by George Herbert and he was known as a metaphysical poet. Metaphysical poet means the uh, poet who lived in uh, the 17th century and he was uh, actually composing the poems that had profound meanings, okay. So that kind of a poet he was and he was considered as the, as I said you before, he was considered, he was the contemporary of Shakespeare and John Milton, okay. So this uh, poem is actually, uh, talk, the poet is talking about money here, okay. As I told you, money is nothing but gold okay so that time money uh, he was referring to as gold only because gold coins were in usage 
ओके सो दो गोल्ड कॉइन्स वेर बींग यूज दैट टाइम बट मनी हियर ही रेफर्स टू एज गोल्ड ओनली ओके सो सिंस द ट्रांसक्शन वॉज थ्रू गोल्ड कॉइन्स ही रेफर्स टू मनी एज गोल्ड ओनली ओके सो दिस इज द थीम ऑफ दिस पॉम एवरस ओके सो जस्ट गो थ्रू द लेक्चर इफ एट ऑल एनी पार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर इज नॉट क्लियर जस्ट गो बैक टू द रिकॉर्डेड लेक्चर वॉच इट अगेन इफ नॉट वी आर ऑलवेज देर टू हेल्प यू टू क्लियर योर डाउट्स ओके so this is a wonderful poem i would like you to read the poem once again because it's in old english you will be able to get a hang of how the olden uh, days uh, poets used to write uh, poems in old english okay so that the thou art wert didst comest so all these will help you out like if you write it down in a uh, in in some place where you can make a note of uh, these poems it will be very helpful for you to study the poems of shakespeare as well as poets like george herbert okay so it will be very helpful for you okay so let us meet again in another session which is more interesting maybe one of the um, poems that is prescribed by university of mysore so till then keep learning most importantly stay safe take care bye bye see you soon